Hello and welcome to this short little video on non-parametric bootstrap. This one will be for three or more samples um, and p-values. Confidence intervals don't make sense when you have more than three. Uh, confidence intervals are on dis differences, so you can't really talk about a difference of three groups. Um, you can break it up into several pairwise groups, um, but that would be confidence intervals for difference in two groups, which is a previous video. So we'll go ahead and load the data, attach it. It's, it's, G, uh, it's the crime data set. I got it from the FBI. Um, variable of interest will be the GSP per capita. But this one is going to be three samples. And it's not much difference between the two sample case and the three sample case, except for obvious extensions. Um, still got the TS equals numeric. We have to define our variable. Um, this data set, one of the cult DOM values is actually um, non-existent. It's, it's blank, so we're going to drop that. It's actually DC. So our measurement and our, our group is all the GSP per capita is other than DC and the culture, uh, dominant political culture other than DC. And you would know to do this simply because you know the, the data itself. I mean, if you look up here for the cult DOM, there's 16 traditionalistic, 17 moralistic, 17 individualistic, and this one, which is blank. So we're just getting rid of it. If you look back at the two sample uh, non parametric bootstrap for, for p value, this next part is going to look pretty familiar in many ways. Null hypothesis is that all three means are the same, which means essentially that the grouping doesn't matter. So we're going to sample in the group, we're going to mix up within the grouping variable itself, call it group X. To make things a little bit more readable, we're going to define our three sample means, uh, x bar 1, x bar 2, x bar 3. They're means of that measurement, and x bar 1 will be for the moralistic, x bar 2 is the individualistic, and x bar 3 is the traditionalistic. Now, as we discussed in class, this is the important part. This is the new part. This is something that actually took a lot of, of, of thinking, of reasoning through. We know that this test statistic needs to equal 0 when the null hypothesis is indeed true. Okay. We also know that it needs to be large when the null hypothesis is not true, when it's really not true. And more importantly, not only does it have to equal 0 when the null hypothesis is true, it can only equal 0 when the null hypothesis is true. And it's the first and the third that required the absolute value. And we could have done squaring. Um, in statistics, we actually would have squared this if we uh, were doing uh, determining what the distribution is by hand. But since we're doing this using uh, bootstrapping, we could use absolute value. We could do squaring. We do uh, fourth powering. Anything that makes sure that all the negatives get mapped to the positives, and all positives remain mapped to the positives, and zero gets mapped to zero. Absolute value works fine. So it's the test statistic is just going to be the absolute value of x bar one minus x bar two plus the absolute value of x bar 1 minus x bar 3, plus the absolute value of x bar 2 minus x bar 3. Those are all the, those are the three ways that you can combine those three x bars. We do it many, many, many times, come up with the distribution. Let's go ahead and run that. And there's the distribution for the test statistic. At this point, that test statistic has no meaning in the physical world. The test statistic is just the absolute value of those differences. That's it. It doesn't measure anything other than, in some abstract way, how far apart the means are. And let me emphasize, it's in some abstract way. If that test statistic's value is 10,000, that has no meaning. You cannot determine whether that means that mean 1 is greater than mean 2, or mean 3 is less than mean 1, or whatever. That test statistic is just something we had to create as a measurement of how far apart the means were, which means that this confidence interval really has no re meaning. Confidence intervals between those two values doesn't mean anything. p-value is what we have to measure. Now, in the one sample case, confidence interval was preferred. In the two sample case, we could do confidence intervals and p-values, and you should do both, really. In the three and more sample case, confidence intervals don't make sense, 
so you're going to be relying solely on p-values. And notice that these four lines look very similar to these four lines. The only difference is the four lines that are now highlighted are based on that random grouping, and these four lines that are now highlighted are based on reality. This is what we actually did observe. Next. So our test statistic of what we actually observed was 18,914 which is greater than it's outside of this confidence interval so we can conclude that our null hypothesis is not correct that it does not reflect reality that at least one of the three means is different here's our test statistic notice we're not doubling it we're not doubling it because the, uh, the test statistics are all positive and zero a value of zero for the test statistic is means that the test that the null hypothesis is correct. So all these test statistics are uh, all these p-values are just one directional p-values. If you could have positive and negative values, then you would have to multiply this by zero to reflect the uh, or more so uh, part. But everything here is positive, so the extreme extremeness is only in one direction. P-value zero which means we strongly reject the null hypothesis. There is some difference in the three uh, dominant political cultures, which makes sense. Let's go ahead and look at a box plot. Individualistic is much higher in terms of the mean than the moralistic and traditionalistic. So looking at the box plot doesn't surprise us that we're rejecting the null hypothesis that the three means are equal. So that was 3. Notice that we had to calculate 3 x-bars, and our test statistic was this. It had 3 parts. If we move it up to the next level and, and, and look at 4, um, you, you can see how quickly it, it gets out of hand. So we'll go ahead and there's 4. Difference in medians across the four census regions. So again, TS will be our test statistic. MMT is our measurement. GRP is our grouping variable. And again, since we're finding p-values, we're making the assumption that the four that the means that the medians are all the same, which means that the grouping doesn't matter. So we'll just shake up the groups. We have to calculate all four of the sample means. Our test statistic has gotten a little bit bigger. Because remember, it's got to be the absolute value of the difference, every possible combination of differences. x bar 1 minus x bar 2, x bar 1 minus x bar 3, x bar 1 minus x bar 4, x bar 2 minus x bar 3, x bar 2 minus x bar 4, x bar 3 minus x bar 4. So when we only had three median, uh, three middles to look at, the, there was only three terms. When we got four, there's six. Can you imagine what it's going to be if there's five groups? that we have to compare. It's going to be 10. It's a lot. Here's the histogram of that distribution. Again, it doesn't really tell us much. Um, it has no physical meaning. Um, there's our 95% confidence interval for the test statistic. Again, it's physically meaningless. Here's how you would calculate the observed test statistic. So what this TS I uh, is, is just the distribution of the test statistic. What OBS is, is what we actually observed for that test statistic. And notice the calculation of OBS is exactly the same as the calculation for TS. The only difference is OBS is based on the actual grouping, and TS is based on the randomized grouping. So what did we actually observe? Almost 25,000, just slightly above the confidence interval not by much. There's our p-value 0.249 there's our box, box plot so we can conclude that the um, uh, median GSP per capita differs across the four census groups that they're not all the same. And we could do this with the standard deviation as well if we wanted I'm not sure why we would want to but we just change all the medians to standard deviations. And we would 
instead of mu ones, it would be SDs, and run everything again. And our p value is going to be 0.11. We were not able to detect a difference in the standard deviations. Here's that box plot. In other words, essentially, we could not detect a difference in the spread across the four groups. So that's how you find p-values when you have three and, and four groups. Um, as you can imagine, you got five groups, it gets difficult really fast. Um, lots and lots of parts to that test statistic. And again, the test statistic doesn't have to be the absolute values, it could be the squares, the fourth powers, etc. But in each case, we're making the assumption that the grouping doesn't matter. So we're shaking up the groups, treating them all as one, calculating the test statistic, and then calculating the statistic for what we observed for the actual grouping, and comparing what we observe to that distribution that we estimated. And that's how you do it with p-values on uh, non-parametric bootstrapping. Hopefully this was helpful. Take care.